Thank you. I'll be using this funky microphone. It says funk in English. F-U-N-K. Of course, it says something else in German. Okay. Those uh, who know me, I will not be making a politically correct presentation, but don't expect personal criticism. I'm proposing an analysis of the situation and prospects as I see them, trying to be constructive. EST was set up 20 years ago with Mary Snell Hornby's vision and a number of assets. There was little money, we had few members, there was virtually no institutional support from academic or other bodies. Few members, a few hundred is few. As opposed to uh, other organizations which have, which have thousands of members. But it had among its members many of the most well-known translation studies scholars. That's quite an asset and a very solid link to what was CERA at that time, which became CETRA which I believe is still and has been and will continue to be a very, very strong asset because it's a scholarly body, international body with considerable social cohesion, dynamic action, and a solid scholarly reputation. So the first tasks for Mary and the first executive board were to set up the new entity, give it an identity, advertise its existence in the world of TS, and start strengthening it through action. This was done through the Constitution, the Congresses, the newsletter, and the website activity now, and EST presence in the social networks as well, thanks to Anthony Pym. Other ideas were launched over the years. One valuable idea of Mary's was to collect MA and graduation thesis to make them available, but Unfortunately, various factors prevented it from being implemented. Things happen, sometimes good ideas uh, emerge, but they cannot be implemented. Another idea was to offer supervision for young researchers back in the very first issues of the newsletter. But we saw quite a number of people who volunteered immediately, and when we saw the names, the question was, how could we make sure that those who volunteered were qualified and do a good job? I said it wouldn't be a politically correct presentation. The idea was not pursued, but I'll get back to it later. But we did establish a Young Scholar Award for recent doctoral dissertations, as well as a set of grants for participation in summer schools, for the purchase of literature, for the funding of events, all of those you're familiar with. Other ideas over the years. There are some who felt EST could perhaps launch some lobbying action or political action in the wide sense of the word to support training programs in difficulties or raise the status of TS in academia. I'll talk a bit about that. Other possibilities were EST cooperation in research project inter alia with private companies or with European institutions and cooperation, other types of cooperation with other TS organizations. I think Eve signed a number of agreements uh, with Canadian, and I think with the Canadian Association and the North American. Okay. Uh, small scale technical seminars were also organized. It started with Eve, and I did a few on supervision, publication, scientific cultures, and research assessment. The idea was that these small seminars would be for, for initial discussions and that they would be followed up with more written contributions and eventually a publication. And the last action I wish to mention now was efforts to inform members and other colleagues of new publications at a time where many TS centers in Europe and elsewhere had little access to the literature. So on the website in particular, uh, there were monthly updates of lists of new publications. So, what worked and what didn't? I think the Congresses are a success, thanks to the organizers, but thanks to the idea. They're good for the social cohesion of EST, they're good for membership, maintenance, and renewal, and presumably, I suppose, they're good for local organizers. It gives them local visibility. The proceedings which follow them are not necessarily as successful in terms of academic quality. And I'm saying this 
partly a self-criticism because I have, edit, I have edited, I've co-edited too. But they're apparently viewed as necessary. The Young Scholar Award is operational, and so are the various grants and scholarships. The newsletter and website are doing fine with steady improvements, and I should like to congratulate in particular the newsletter editors for their very fine works, very, very fine work over the past few years. Though it is true that we don't know what impact they have had. What about our political ambitions in the wide sense? Do we have any clout whatsoever? I don't think we do. And I don't think it's reasonable to expect to have some as long as we have no institutional recognition from authorities. Also, we're very open to a wide variety of views. So if we take firm positions on certain issues, even if it is a majority view, uh, dissenters will not stay with ESD. So I think we have to be careful with that. As to cooperation with other learned, learned societies, we have these agreements, but I haven't seen anything happening with that. And we do have very friendly relations with some of them, and still, apparently, there are not enough common interests, common project, or somehow it doesn't seem to uh, work very well. As to participation of ESD in research, I have mixed feelings about it. I listened to Anthony Pym this morning, and he says, uh, we do something on the status of translators, and we get paid for it, fine. Uh, I remember something else that we did with a private company under a European contract, and it wasn't fine at all. The quality of the project was probably not very good, and there was a risk involved for ESD, including financial risk. And can we take responsibility as ESD for the quality of research to be carried out by ESD as such? I think it's very risky. But the networking resources of ESD, we are a network, could help find individuals or organizations among members or even non-members who would do cooperative research but under their own responsibility, not the responsibility of ESD. I mentioned earlier that ESD could provide information on recent publications to colleagues who have little access to it. While I was president, I made sure that at least 10 new bibliographical items were presented to readers every month. I don't know how useful that was, even though I have statistics and know that some people read that. But anyway, I think that today is no longer necessary because so much material is online and virtually everybody has access to internet. ESD also provides information on TS events such as conferences, something that the present board does very well among other things that the present board does very well, and I, again, I should like to congratulate Anthony and the, whole, and the whole new team. The technical seminars which were organized, those that I organized, they were not a success, in my view. There were relatively few participants, and speakers did not comply with the brief, just as speakers in EST Congresses don't comply with talking with the idea of talking about the theme of the Congress, and this unfocused the meetings, and there was virtually no follow-up. So that was my failure. So how is T doing? How is EST doing uh, on the whole? My personal view is that it's doing fine. It's really doing fine with the resources it has. Its membership, I thought it was steady, but I heard this morning from Sonia that it's much more than steady, that it's increasing. This is fine. Uh, the Congresses are popular, we're, we're rather well-known, I think, in the TS community, and we offer real services to the TS community. So I think we're doing okay. Question is, should we be more ambitious? We could think of actions worth pursuing, and we could find a few people who will devote much time to the effort. I have seen over the years that there are people who are very, very committed. I, I don't want to start citing them because I'm sure to forget some people, and so I don't want to forget anyone, but some people are really very, very highly committed. But most of us are not, really. Uh, and anyway, there is renewal of the executive board every three years, partial renewal every, every six years, then people renew themselves completely, the whole uh, makeup of the board, and it's, it's quite difficult. Uh, I do not blame people who do not contribute that much on a continued basis. Many have other priorities linked to their duties in academic or other positions, 
and ESG activity take second place. I can't blame anyone uh, for that. I have seen this over the past 10 years. I think it would not be realistic to expect a change. So what can we do to develop further our services to the TS community? I think that probably the best strategies would be based on the assumption that we do as much as we can with existing steady resources. In particular, our networking capabilities, and I think they are very good. And the fact that we have highly qualified, acknowledged scholars among us. If we want to be successful in our action, we need to use these resources in ways which will be perceived as directly useful or at least enjoyable by the individuals concerned. If they do not find that they're directly useful, we don't find a lot of commitment. There were lots of ideas that we tried to launch and that never got anywhere, I think, because there were not enough people who were committed. Here are a couple of ideas, just a couple of ideas. One of them is inspired by the action of the training committee of IEC, the International Association of Conference Interpreters. Uh, it holds one and a half day training seminars for trainers of conference interpreters on a yearly basis. Sometimes there's two or three every year. Now, our expertise lies in research, not in the practice of translation interpreting, and we have scholars whose academic qualifications and skills are acknowledged. Could we not offer one or two day seminars in various countries where instructors specialized in the relevant topics are not available? I hear this morning, I heard from someone in one of the schools that uh, research is not very present there or that it's divided between uh, their various departments and they don't have local uh, specialists. So there could be introductory seminars and more advanced seminars that we could offer, we EST could offer to uh, organize as AIC does. The instructors would be qualified and even in terms of usefulness, participants could get European credits, so-called ECTSs. After this has been negotiated with relevant universities. A two-day seminar with a total of 12 contact hours could be helpful to participants, not only in terms of knowledge gain, but also in terms of ECTSs. And the funding could come from either the event grant or a special fund, or it could be paid by the participants at very low fees if this is done regionally. <clears throat> Another idea, and again, I heard from someone that they don't have local supervisors uh, for the particular specialities in which they would like to do research sometimes, the students. Uh, so the initial supervisor idea did not work out very well, but in a more institutional setting, it might work. We do have members whose academic qualifications are perfect full professors, half professors, or three-quarter professors, whatever. Anything that you need, depending on the, on the university. So if they gave seminars, or if they accepted to supervise people in a university other than their own, agreements could be negotiated so that students, let's say from one place, who wish to specialize in a particular field, and they want to supervise from another country, could do that. Thanks to our networking capacity, we could do that. I'm looking at the watch. <clears throat> Just as an example, I'm working on, on a project which involves German and Japanese and French and Spanish and American Sign Language. And for some of the work, I would love to have German A's, native German speakers, who uh, understand English well enough and if someone from a country or a German speaking country where they don't have enough supervisors because they're swamped with work uh, wants to work with me I'd be happy to do that that's an opportunity that's directly useful and that is enjoyable but this is just an example this has been done before and I think ESD can help uh, foster cooperative research is another possibility cooperative research on various topics among EST members. The question is, how do we go about it? We coordinate it through ads, through the website, through the bulletin. It just has to be launched, and then we see what we can do with it. And uh, another idea, the last idea I will be talking about is another one that was 
mentioned by, uh, by Yves Gambier, uh, we have these journal rankings. And in some countries, unfortunately, they're very important. Where you're published, uh, what your impact factor is, and all sorts of uh, very highly quantified things. And the way these journals are ranked is not in line with what we know is happening in translation studies. But it just so happens that there is a highly dedicated individual. He's crazy. He's been working on it for more than 10 years, Javier Franco from Alicante, who has developed BITRA, where you can do this sort of work. If we can cooperate with him and cooperate with students who are doing, perhaps, who need to, to do some research work for the graduation thesis, we can come up with realistic uh, rankings of journals according to citation analysis data, which are reliable. And once we have the result of research, which will be useful for all participants, for all the students who will work on that, or they need not be students, uh, it could be just colleagues who want to go to do this sort of work, with all the data, with all the evidence, then we could go to the institutional authorities and say, look, you say this journal should be ranked like this, this, rank, this journal should be ranked like that, but here's the evidence, here's the data. And uh, again, we could use our networking. That's it for now. Thank you. Thank you very much.